Today in House Talk, the clock is ticking on the federal housing tax credit. And if you're still hoping to take advantage of the $8,000 tax credit, we have some tips so that the home you want will not slip away. Here to help us with this is Ron Phipps from Phipps Realty. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having us, Brad. Pleasure. Uh, why don't you tell everybody right off the bat about the deadlines? Uh, most important deadline is you have to be in sales agreements that is a valid sales agreement by the 30th of April. So that means that the buyer and the seller must sign a sales agreement by April 30th. You do have 60 days to close. So from April 30th until June 30th, you can close any time, but you must be closed by June 30th. If you don't close, it goes away. One other footnote, the $8,000 is for first time home buyers. There's also a $6,500 credit for repeat home buyers. How does this affect short sales? Well, short sales are a real problem because there's no real timeline to make sure you get a response. So in a normal, what we call arm's length transaction or regular transaction, you know, a response within a few days is common and being able to close it out in 30 to 60 days is normal. With short sales, it can take months. And that's one of the questions that you really want to ask the listing agent is what's the response rate? How quickly will we know? Now, if you're a buyer and you make an offer, should you be prepared to keep it even if you can't make this deadline or how's that? It's a little touchy. Well, you know, some of us are writing into the actual proposals, either the offers or the sales agreements, that it's valid assuming we are in agreement by April 30th and close by June 30th, meaning the buyer would walk. And that's certainly something you want to talk with your agent about whether to do that or not. But if it's not there and you're relying on it, then you probably need to be able to find an alternative that works that you can close and be done by the June 30th and in agreements by April 30th. There you go. And uh, with the looming deadlines, how does this affect sellers and how are you advising people that are trying to sell? You know, for sellers, they really want to take advantage of it because we don't know what's going to happen to the market you know, once that the credit expires. And one of the reasons we're not sure is we just don't know what the impact is. The purpose of it was to be catalytic, to encourage the market to go forward. That said, when it stops, there's going to be probably a brief pause. So if I'm a seller, I probably want to get my house on early in the spring market, meaning I do it now. Yep. The second thing is price to be compelling, not competitive. The market's still correcting. It's still adjusting. And while we're showing a little bit of appreciation on some markets and a lot more activity, price so that your house is the one that the buyer's buying, not the one they look at to buy something else. All right. Beautiful. Informative as always. Thanks so Thank much you. for stopping by, Ron. Okay. Guys, for more information, more real estate tips, head over to the website, foxprovidence.com. All right.